Welcome. This is Jed with Limo Anywhere. I'll be your host today for the third of three walkthrough onboarding webinars. All right. In today's webinar, we'll be going over enhanced functionality such as settling, invoicing, creating custom invoices, oh, excuse me, creating custom forms, creating scheduled messages, uh, creating driver payrolls, reports, and touching up a little on the partnerships and affiliates with Limo Anywhere. All right, in our previous webinar, we went over creating a reservation and applying a payment. The next step for the reservation is to settle it and if needed to create an invoice. One of the reasons for settling a trip is for setting up driver payroll. You won't be able to create a payroll log for a driver unless a trip has been settled. All right, so after a reservation has been completed, there are two possible uh, situations that will allow you to continue and settle a reservation. All right, uh, the first example is here. Uh, if the billing contact on the reservation does not have a customer account, or if a customer account is not designated on that reservation, then two things must be true in order to settle this trip. The status must be set to passenger dropped off or the equivalent status that is set under the completing section of your work driver flow. And the second criteria is that the payment on the reservation should show total due as zero, all right? To indicate that this reservation has been paid for, all right? If both those situations are true for this reservation without a customer account on it, you will be able to settle this trip, all right? So on the settlement screen, you'll see that reservation here. And when we go to click on the settlement button, the settle option is available. All right, the second scenario will be here. For a customer that has a customer account on the reservation, one of two things can be true. All right, the status must be set to passenger dropped off still. And you can either have a payment applied to the reservation so that the total due is zero, or the payment method must be set to direct bill invoice. So if, that, if the payment method is set to direct bill invoice and the status is set to passenger dropped off, that will allow you to settle this trip as well. And as you recall, setting the payment method to direct bill invoice will only be available to customers with a customer account. All right, so if we go to the settlement screen for this one, We'll see that trip right here, set to passenger dropped off, direct bill invoice, go to the settle, uh, settlement screen, and we will be able to settle this trip. All right, so let's go ahead and settle these trips. All right, so let's settle this first one for the customer without a customer account. All right, the first thing you wanna do when you open this up is review and verify that the driver and vehicle are correct on this settlement screen. All right, then you wanna scroll down and confirm that the finances on this trip are correct. And if you've created a driver pay schedule, you wanna make sure you click on first driver payroll and confirm that the driver is getting paid for this trip. If everything looks correct, you're gonna click on update and then you're gonna click on settle to settle this trip. And after it finishes settling, you can close this window and you'll notice that trip has been removed from the done and unsettled reservations section. All right, and it's been moved here to your settled reservations. Where is it? This one right here. All right, now for the other reservation that did have the customer account on it, we can go and settle that as well. Click on settle. Again, verify the driver and vehicle information are correct. And verify the finances for this trip are correct. And if pay schedule was created for the driver, you wanna make sure that the driver is getting paid for this trip as well. All right, everything looks good here. Again, you're gonna update and then click on settle to settle the trip. All right, and if we close that, you'll notice it has been removed and moved here to your settled reservations tab. All right. And 
that concludes settling your trips. All right, now, now that we've settled the trips for the customer with the, with the uh, direct bill invoice, we can actually create that invoice for that customer. All right, to create that invoice, we can go to receivables, all right? So before we get into creating this invoice, I just wanted to reiterate, as previously mentioned, a reservation is eligible for invoicing only if the billing contact on the reservation has a customer account set to direct bill invoice and the status is set to passenger dropped off. All right, so let's go ahead and add that trip that we just settled to, the, to an invoice. We're gonna locate the billing contact. All right, we're gonna locate the trip we just settled. There it is right there. I'm gonna put, going to put a check mark to add that to the invoice. We're gonna add this previously settled trip as well. All right, so select both trips and click on add selected trips to invoice and that will create the invoice. All right, now, now that the invoice has been created, you can add any customer messages you wanna include or any invoice notes that you wanna include as needed. All right, uh, if there are no additional trips to be added to this invoice, you can go and click on finalize and that'll put finalize on this invoice to indicate that no other trips are to be added to this invoice. And once that's done, you can now email this to your billing contact by clicking email fax and choosing the email format, I mean, uh, the, the invoice format that you wish to send, All right? And if you're not familiar with the formats for your invoice, before you do send it for the first time, you wanna go ahead and click on print so you can review the formats of those invoices. So I click on print now for the basic invoice. And this is what the basic invoice would look like before you send it out. And you wanna compare it to where that go away. All right, if you want to compare it to the itemized invoice, for example, do that. Cancel the print job. Now you can compare the two. Where did it go? It's over here. There we go. Compare the two invoices together side by side. All right, and once you decide on a, a particular format you'd like to send, and you can choose that to send and you go cl click on e email fax. All right, go ahead and choose, I'll go and choose the itemized invoice. Then you wanna verify that the email address for your billing contact is present with a check mark and click send invoice. And that'll send a copy of the invoice to your billing contacts email address. All right. Now, as I mentioned earlier, to create this invoice, normally, or usually, you would wanna go ahead and settle the trip before adding it to an invoice. However, there will be scenarios where you might uh, add a trip, want, might wanna add an unsettled trip to an invoice, All right? This would be coming up in a situation if your customer uh, that has a customer account has a trip entered months in advance in your system and he asked to include that trip on his next invoice. So if you wanted to create an invoice for a future trip for that customer, you go here, create invoices, click on include unsettled trips and hit go. Then you can look for your billing contact and review all the, all the future trips that you wanna add to that invoice. All right, and click add selected trips to invoice. And now you can now you can finalize this invoice and send it out to your billing contact. All right. The only difference here is once he's paid for this, once he sent you the payment for this trip, or once you've applied payments for these invoices, uh, you need to make sure that you go ahead and settle those trips so that you can pay your drivers. All right. Now there's a few ways, a couple of ways I should say, to uh, apply payments to your invoice. All right, so once you've emailed the invoice and you're ready to uh, uh, apply a payment to it, uh, the best way to apply to a payment is to go to receive payments, locate the billing contact, and click on apply payments to this, to this account. All right, if you do that, you can then see all of the outstanding invoices that have yet to be paid for. And assuming he sent you 
just enough money to cover the latest invoice. Uh, you can then apply payments, or maybe he sent you uh, money to cover all of these invoices, or maybe he has credits to cover these invoices. All right? In this case, we're going to use the credits to pay for these invoices. Apply payment to this one, and apply payment to this invoice. The total of this invoice will be four hundred and thirteen dollars, four hundred three dollars and thirteen cents. Excuse me. So we're going to submit the payment, and we're going to apply these credits that they've built up in our system. All right, submit, and form of payment will be credits. And we're going to apply $403.13 worth of credits out of the 526 and 17 available credits. Submit that. And we can refresh this page. All right, now adjust the available credits now. All right, so $123.04. All right. And let's see if we go to, I believe if we go to close invoices, we should see those on the latest invoices that were closed. Nope, still on invoices here. So we need to go here to invoices, locate those last two invoices. Oh yeah, the close option is not available. All right, I'll have to look into that later. All right, the other way to apply payments to your invoices is apply it directly to an invoice. So if you go to invoices and go to an unpaid invoice, let's go ahead and use this one right here. Go ahead and open up this invoice. Oops, let's do it for uh, this one right here. All right, so this one still owes $211. Let's say that they've uh, contacted you recently to apply $211.50 to this invoice. So you can go to payments, at which point you go and choose the form of payment they're paying with. Let's see, they sent a check, for example. In the amount of $211.50, you can apply it to this invoice and click go ahead and submit and it'll apply the payment to the invoice. And now it shows paid in full. Uh, you can go and finalize it and then close it. All right, and that's all, and that's all there is too regarding invoices. All right, so let's check, let's shift our attention now to custom forms. All right, so for custom forms, we're gonna go here to my office, custom forms tab. All right, and that'll bring us here. So for custom forms, uh, custom forms are gonna allow us or allow our customers uh, to create alternative forms to the default documents in our system or to create new forms uh, from scratch that you can include to send out to your customers uh, via the reservation or from an invoice. All right, so depending on how you create these forms, you can send it out from a reservation or from an invoice. All right, uh, let's see. The custom forms you build primarily are gonna be filled with custom tags, all right? These tags are gonna pull information from the reservation to fill out the information on these forms, all right? I think we went over some of these tags or s similar tags when we went over quotes the other day when creating the response template, all right? But for the most part, you can go and create your custom form here. And then once you've got it saved, you can actually look to see what the form looks like on your reservation. So if we wanna see what this custom form looks like, open up this reservation, do a print job on this custom form. And this is what that custom form looks like. And if we wanna compare that to the actual standard confirmation, load that up, cancel the print job. All right, then we can compare the two different forms. All right, they're basically the same information, slightly different formats, all right? Let's see, where are we on that form?
There we are. All right, uh, let's see. Now in regards to getting these uh, templates that you can use, if you don't wanna build them from scratch, uh, you can go to our help, uh, Limo Anywhere University website. All right, this is our knowledge base website. And on the knowledge base website, if you type in custom, that'll bring up the article for our custom forms, how to utilize our free custom form templates. If you access this, you can then scroll down and get access to the HTML files for those custom forms. All right, so this custom form that I loaded up, I got it from this HTML file, downloaded that, uh, highlighted and copied all that code, and then in the system, uh, actually I did, uh, you want to start with a new one and click on HTML and then paste all that HTML code in here. And this is what it would look like after it gets pasted in. All right, it looks like that. And when you click on normal, you can then see what it looks like on, a, on the normal view. So once you got it here, go and give it a name and update it. So now you can make changes to it that are appropriate to what you're trying to build for that custom form. You can sit here and remove items that you don't want to include on the custom form or include items that weren't included there before and even change the format uh, of the uh, fonts or the boxes, the, the, the design of the form itself, all right? If you need more information on how to uh, create forms or adjust forms, formats, I would recommend uh, on our webpage, on our knowledge base webpage, oh, let's gonna do that again. All right, let me go ahead and bring that up again, custom. All right, there is an article on how to build a custom form. And I would encourage you to read through this if you wanted to learn more information on how to format the custom form and build your own custom forms from scratch. Um, on both of these articles, there is a statement that if you do need a, a new form created from scratch and you want us to build it for you, we can do it for $249 per form. All right. All right, so other than scheduled messaging, the next thing we want to cover, um, other than custom forms, we're going to cover scheduled messaging next, excuse me. All right, so we can go here next to company settings, messaging and template settings, and then go to scheduled messaging tab. All right, now the scheduled messaging tab, this is going to allow you to create uh, scheduled emails or scheduled text messages to be sent out to our customers, drivers, or your affiliates, all right? Uh, and these messages will be sent out based on the trigger of a status change on the reservation or a set time before or after pickup time on a reservation. All right, so there's, as I mentioned, there's two types of formats you can build. And the main difference between an email uh, scheduled message and an SMS message, the SMS messages are going to be limited to 140 characters. There are no formatting tools available, so it's just straight up text. And there's no attachment that you can include, all right? So the SMS messages are going to be short and brief messages that you're going to send out, whereas your emails, you will have the ability to attach, uh, attach forms to it or include attachments to it. There will be formatting tools to format your message and there will be no limit to the number of characters that you can include on the message. All right, so let's take a look at an example of one of these scheduled emails I have in my system, All right? So most of our customers like to send out um, a reminder email to their customers and it looks something like this. I can give it a title, in this case, one day reminder. And then for the email type, and for the reservation status, about 99% of the time you're setting these up, the email type will be set as trip and the reservation status will be set to new live. All right, and when you're setting up the trip type, if this is for your trips, for your drivers that you're setting up, you wanna do in-house, right? Then for service type, you wanna go and select all the service types. Uh, I would recommend selecting all service types. That way, regardless of the service type selected on a reservation, this message will be sent. 
right? Then the email class will dictate who you're sending this message to, either a customer, your driver, or your affiliate. In this case, we want to send it to our customer. And by choosing customer here, it allows us to select which customer to send it to, a billing contact, passenger, or booking contact. All right, in this case, we want to go and make sure that the passenger gets it. And it looks like the booking contacts also want to get reminded as well. All right, and if we wanted to attach a form, we could attach any of the uh, native documents that come with Limo Anywhere, or any of the custom forms that you've built in Limo Anywhere. Uh, in addition, you can also make attachments to JPEGs or uh, PDF files that you've uploaded into your system, all right? Some examples I've seen of JPEGs added on would be a survey, uh, not a JPEG, a PDF file survey that was created that they added so they could get some feedback on how their performance was. All right. And once you selected uh, who you're sending this to and selected any attached forms, you're gonna set here when this is gonna be sent. All right. And since we're sending this a day before the trip, instead of as a trigger based on a status change, we're gonna use this option here and set it to one day before, or we could set it to 24 hours before pickup time. And because we're setting this up here, we wanna go ahead and set this, uh, the status is here to indicate when not to send this message. All right, so if this is being sent a day before and the status on the reservation gets changed to anything that has to do with canceled, you wanna prevent this message from being sent, all right? The next three settings, you wanna leave as yes, no, yes, and I'll go over each one of these, all right? The allow profile level setting override is, is in regards to your customer accounts in your system, all right? So let me open that customer account. So on your customer accounts that you create, if you recall, uh, as you enter an email address, there'll be a section on that email address where you can exclude it from receiving automated messages. So if you do put a check mark on that email address on a customer account, that will exclude this email address from receiving any automated messages. And this setting here to allow profile level setting override, you wanna leave as yes to honor that check mark. If you set that to no, then it's gonna ignore that check mark and go ahead and send this email to that email address. Send this email to, only to accounts who selected this template in their profiles you wanna leave this setting as no. That way this message is available for all reservations and for all customer accounts. If you set this setting to yes, then on a customer account or for a specific customer account or in your system, you need to designate that they are to receive this message. You'd go to the miscellaneous tab on that customer account and you see the message that you wanted to include for them and select that and save it so that they would receive that message. All right, then the last setting here is active, is gonna turn this message on or off. All right, so if you wanna temporarily stop this message from being sent, you can set this to no and it won't be sent anymore. Then down below is where you can format your message. And as you can see, it is also using trip tags, uh, similar to what we just went through with the custom forms and uh, what we went through a couple of days ago or on the uh, previous webinar with the uh, response templates. All right, again, the trip tags are gonna be used to pull information from the reservation to include on this message, All right? And if you wanted to see what this message would look like for your customer uh, when he receives it on his email, you can put your email address, put the confirmation number of the customer that you wanted to check on, uh, click on send email, and it would send you a copy of what it would be sent to your customer for that reservation, based on that reservation number you entered in. All right, and you can also create an, a, a text message. And again, on the text messages, it'll be the same thing as your emails, except for the fact there's no formatting and there's a limited number of characters you can include. All right, uh, the only other difference with uh, t texting, that for texts, there are gonna be blackout times that you can set. So if you don't wanna send this text, in a certain time of the day or night. For example, if you don't wanna send it between 1 and a.m. and 3 a.m. in the morning, you can set the blackout time to yes, save that, and this message won't, whatever message you set that on will not be sent 
during that time range. All right. All right, now that we've completed our scheduled messaging, let's finish up on paying up our drivers. All right, uh, so as you recall from our first webinar, you'd set up driver payroll on each driver. All right, you'd set up a pay schedule for each driver on the driver profile. Right, and on the next, on the second webinar, we went over settling a trip. So when you settle a trip, you wanna make sure that you are selecting first driver payroll and confirming that you are including uh, pay for that driver. All right. All right, and now finally, when we're actually paying the driver, we're gonna to go to paid payables. That'll take us to the pay driver tab. We wanna look for the driver that you wanna include, create a payroll for. And this will show all the drivers that have completed trips that you settled, all right? So in this case, we wanna to go to this driver and include all the trips uh, that we want to include for this, this week's payroll or for this month's payroll and click on uh, Pay selected, pay selected driver, all right? Then we can create a payroll log and this will be for 619. Actually, we'll do it beginning of the week, 614. I'll do 619 to 620, 630, there we go. All right, and we create this payroll log like that. It'll then show how much you owe for that driver. Then you can email this payroll log to your driver and you'll see it exactly the same thing that you got on the screen here, All right? Let's see what we got here. All right, here's the email that I just received as a driver and it looks very similar, if not the exact same as what you created here for your driver, All right? So that's how you'd create a payroll for your drivers and get it out to them, All right? And, in, and, and you can also create a payroll report to send out or to print out to your driver. Now for reports themselves, generally speaking, you wanna to go to reports to create your reports, right? And under reports, there are two types of main reports you can create uh, on the main reports tab. Uh, you can have all these options for these different reports. The major one you're gonna be running here would be the sales revenue report, all right? There's also available the reporting and analytics tool. This is currently still under development. Uh, a lot of it still is being worked on, right? But uh, you can create uh, a sales revenue report and actually customize it based on uh, the information that you wanna include or, or exclude from that report. If you're running the regular sales revenue report, you wanna go and select your date range for the report that you wanna run. We'll do it for the month of June. All right, then if you don't change any settings here, you can go and leave everything the way they are. And you wanna go ahead and use the, the default report type, all trips sorted chronologically to generate their report. And it will show all the trips that were uh, finished in that month. And at the bottom, you'll see the total that you made for all those trips and the total number of trips that you did. All right. On the sales revenue report, you can also vary the uh, information that you that you want to look at by running a report, uh, sales revenue report strictly on business billing contacts or companies, or by cars or by drivers or affiliates, or by getting a report just on taxes and gratuities and surcharges, or whatever reports uh, regarding your sales that you wanted to take a look at in that date range. All right, there are too many reports here to go over uh, on one walkthrough. Uh, I would recommend that you uh, go ahead and take a look at each of these reports so you can run them and see that if they're gonna benefit you and your company. All right, but for, the, for the most part, the main report you're gonna be running here would be the sales revenue report. All right, now to, fin uh, to finish up, we're gonna touch a little bit on 
the partnerships and affiliates that are available for Limo Anywhere. All right, so we go to network, go to partner network here. All right, so for the partnerships that are available to you as a customer of Limo Anywhere, all right, partners will be listed here under partners and you'll need to make sure you set up an account with that partner. That way you can connect to them and start receiving trips from them. All right, and if you need more information on partnerships, we can send you some literature on each of these different partners. All right, now in regards to affiliates, affiliates would be other transportation companies that you'd be working with. Uh, you'd be able to farm out work to them or farm in work for them to do on their behalf. All right, so there's two types of affiliates that you can work with. There are affiliates that use them anywhere and affiliates that don't use them anywhere. All right, we're going to cover first the affiliates that use them anywhere. So if you want to find an affiliate to work with, uh, to start a relationship with for farm in and farm out work, you can go here to the partner to the uh, network icon and, and go to locate affiliates. All right. Once you click on locate affiliates, you can just click on the country flag that you want to locate an affiliate in. All right, once you get to the search page, uh, you might have an overwhelming number of pages to search. So to filter this down, instead of looking at all the country, all the companies in the United States that use them anywhere, we can just filter it down to the state. All right, so if we just look in Texas, do a search, that'll narrow that number down to 11 pages instead of 160. All right, now if I want to narrow this down even more, I can just do specific cities in, in Texas, such as the Dallas area. All right, and that'll whittle that number down to just four pages, All right? So once I get it to a reasonable sized number of pages to, to look at, I can click on, start clicking on view to review each one of these affiliates, All right? Click on the view option that'll open up the profile for that affiliate. What you want to do here is you want to scroll down and take a look at what vehicles they have available. All right. And if they have any specific requirements that you need to adhere to to start a relationship with them. All right. And if everything looks good here and you want to go ahead and start a relationship to do farm in and farm out work with them, you'll go in here and click on establish affiliate relationship and then click on submit request. Uh, when you do this, it's going to send an email to that affiliate, letting them know that you wish to start a, a affiliate relationship with them for farm in and farm out work. All right. And if you go to the network request section, uh, you'll be able to see that invitation you sent out and the status it's in. It'll be either accepted or pending. All right. On the left side, you'll be able to see all the uh, affiliates has sent you invitations for affiliate relationships and you'll be able to accept or reject their invitations. Now for the invitations that it accepted either by you or by the affiliates you, you invite, uh, for those that use them anywhere, it's going to create uh, a affiliate profile and a customer account in your system for that affiliate. All right. Once the relationship has been established. All right. And I'll also create an affiliate profile. All right, now the major difference between affiliates that use them anywhere and those that don't, for ones that don't use them anywhere, you would have to manually create an affiliate profile and, and manually create a customer account for those affiliates. That way you can do farm in and farm out work with them. All right, and then farming in and farming out to them from the system. Let's see. After you've indicated who you want to farm it out to, right, and saved it. Let's say we're going to farm this trip out. Uh, if this is a company that uses Limo anywhere to farm this out, you click on LANet to open up this menu. That way you can choose the vehicle on the affiliate side that matches the vehicle that your customer requested from you and then click on complete e-farm out to farm this trip out to the affiliate. And the affiliate end, he'll receive it on the online e-farm in tab and he'll be able to accept or reject that, that uh, 
that farm out. All right, if he accepts the farm out on your end, it'll change from, uh, it'll, it'll go to assigned or whatever you have set up on your affiliate workflow here. When you offer to affiliate, if, if it gets uh, uh, accepted, it'll go to farm out assigned. All right, or is that reservation? There we go. Now for those that don't use Limo anywhere, instead of using the LA net button to farm this out, you would instead use the manually button to farm it out. All right, so for those that don't have Limo anywhere in their system, you'd click out manually. It would open up this email that you would send out to your affiliate and the email would have a, a check mark to include the affiliate trip sheet to be sent out. So the affiliate will have the information regarding this trip. And you can put in a personal message for the affiliate, letting them know, hey, can you take this trip? Uh, I don't have the resources for it, or this is out of, out of my jurisdiction for my drivers. Can, uh, would you mind doing this trip on my behalf? All right, then you can indicate how much you wanna pay for them either here in the messages or when you farm it out by putting it here on the farm out costs, All right? And if it's being farmed out to an affiliate that doesn't use them anywhere, uh, for him to acknowledge that he's gonna accept or reject this reservation, he would have to reply to your email or call you up to let you know as there's no way for him to update the statuses on your system. All right, that covers the major differences between the affiliates that use them anywhere and that don't use them anywhere and that finishes up our webinar. All right, I wanna thank you for your attendance and your time on our webinar. And if you have any questions or want, have any concerns regarding your Luminor system, please feel free to call us at the support center or to utilize our knowledge base website. All right, on the knowledge base website, other than the articles that are there, there are also some help vid helpful videos that you can review. All right, again, thank you for your attendance and have a great, great evening or a good night.